Well, I have a friend that just got his lung transplant, uh, God bless him, uh, Jonathan Lissy, and, uh, and on February 3rd, he got his lung transplant. He was only on the list for three weeks, and, and he was in uh, really b bad shape. He was on um, a BiPAP machine. He was in USC hospital, and unfortunately, you know, he was on his way out, and now he's walking four miles. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, how do you feel? Should everybody sign their donor card on their driver's license? Absolutely. There's no reason not to. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very religious, um, and that's really helped me in maturing and handling cystic fibrosis. And, you know, I really believe that God and Jesus want people to be donors because, you know, we don't go to heaven with our body parts. And, you know, one person can help 30 people. It's unbelievable. It, you know, it's not just your lungs, your heart, your kidneys. It's your eyes. It's, it's more stuff than I know because uh, biology wasn't my best subject. That's why I'm an accountant. But uh, I do know that one person can, can give 30 people a transplant and help them. And look, when I uh, got my lung transplant, one of the best moments of my life was uh, just two weeks after my transplant, walking on the beach with my daughter. And I was almost in tears, but that was something, she was six years old, that I couldn't do for six years. You know, it was just too tough. It was just such a struggle. And not only was I walking on the beach, I walked in the sand, which is even much tougher than just walking on the sidewalk. And, you know, then when I finally came home after a couple of months of rehabilitation and being able to ride my bicycle with my daughter and, and just, be a father to her. I remember when she was an infant and, you know, I'd see other parents holding their infants and going to the market and I just couldn't do that because going to the market and walking up and down the aisles, I would have a coughing attack and I remember one time I was in the uh, shopping center and one of my neighbors heard me having a coughing attack and he came around the, the corner and he's like, oh, I knew that was you, Scott, and, you know, and now I can be a father to my daughter, and it's just fantastic. You helped us to develop a cough monitor uh, using the Life Shirt, and I remember looking, and you were having, I'm forgetting exactly how many coughs you had over an hour. I think it was uh, over 100 coughs an hour. There. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we studied you again after the transplant, and uh, you'd gone to zero. Uh, just uh, something remarkable. I just I wanted, We've talked a little bit earlier about how your life changes. It's kind of a shock to get, uh, to get extra life. One of our, our donors, uh, uh, the mother of Danny Knapp, has really been helpful with our uh, Great Strides walk and the, uh, helps us to bring computers into the homes of children who, who really can't get out anymore or spend hours in, in uh, clinic time. I just remember he was uh, trying to be a macho 16-year-old, trying to learn to drive and, and uh, just blue as blue could be. And he had that same walk on the beach and and uh, he came up to me after his macho self there and said, Dr. Landon, don't I look pretty in pink? <laughs> now, how did, how did it feel when you woke up after your lung transplant? And how soon were they, did they have you on a bike? And uh, how did your life change, given all that extra life now? It changed very, very dramatically. And um, I was really lucky, and I think it was because I went into it like, it, this was my Olympic event. This was my Athens, Greece. Um, lifting weights, I got up to 35 pound dumbbells bench pressing on my floor between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. I, I remember I was with my daughter and buying the dumbbells. It was hard for me just to carry them over to the counter. I was completely out of breath. But I was supposed to be on a, on a ventilator for at least a week to 10 days and I was off in two hours. It was a complete miracle absolute miracle and I felt great I was um, up and walking in about three days and I still had the chest tubes in me uh, draining my new lungs but I was able to walk around the hospital and after 10 days I was on a bike and and, and I was on a treadmill for a half hour and when I went home I was still doing the treadmill for a half hour but I was on the, doing about two two and a half miles on a on a stationary bike and I remember I was watching the World Series and I'd be on my stationary bike watching I think it was the Subway Series also where the Yankees played the Mets and uh, it was just fantastic and then when I got home it, it was really like quantum leap you know it, it it was like I was 
I was in a, someone else's body. It, it wasn't me, and I really wasn't ready for the mental aspects of it. And um, I wish that the transplant teams would learn from that, that are doing the transplants at Duke University and UC San Diego, where I got my uh, double lung transplant, and what a fantastic team they have down there. And, and God bless them and Dr. Young and Stephanie Osborne. Um, they just do a fantastic job. But I think I was ready for it physically. I mean, I, when they told me, you know, you're going to gain 20 pounds because of the prednisone that you'll be on, I'm like, fantastic. You know, my dream weight was 175 pounds. I eventually went up to 206 pounds. So, you know, I could knock down two people with one check when I, when I went back and played ice hockey, which I remember they told me, um, you know, I said, I can't wait to play ice hockey. This was when I was on the uh, transplant list. And they said, well, you know, most people don't, aren't able to do that. You know, they didn't want to just come out and say, you know, you'll never be able to play ice hockey again. But that's pretty much what they were saying because no one had ever done it before. People had, you know, been able to go back to bicycling and they've been able to go skiing with their new lungs, but no one had actually, they've never seen anybody. I had heard of a person in Washington, D.C. that had his transplant and I believe at Duke University that had, after six months, gone back and played ice hockey. So that gave me a lot of encouragement. And I was actually back on the ice rink in three months. And I remember I, I went to a, a store and I got some new shoulder pads and with some serious like motocross padding around my chest just to protect my sternum and, and my ribs and my new, new lungs. But uh, when I went back and played ice, ice hockey, that, that was really, really great. Well, I remember you telling me a story about how much your uh, teammates cared for you and, and it was, <laughs> yes. a, it was a, a none on one and right. you were chasing him down. Could you tell that story, but delete the, one of the words that uh, came out of your... Yeah. <laughs> um, I went back and I, when I went back to, to play hockey, uh, the first league I joined was uh, Aurora hockey team and one of my best friends uh, was playing on that team and uh, I was playing defense and a guy got behind me and he was on a breakaway with our goalie and, and I, I came chasing back and I, I caught up to him and I actually went out and dove to knock the sweep the puck away or at least interfere with his shot and he ended up shooting the uh, shot wide so it worked and I got up and I was really really happy that you know I was able to sprint back and dive and, and at least not give up a goal and my friend just started yelling at me and using all kinds of words. And he was my best friend, so he was, he was like a brother and got in my face. And he's like, you know, what are you doing? You think the person who gave up those lungs wants you to be diving on the ground and risk injuring them? And, um, you know, I said to him, I was like, you know, well, he would want me to utilize them as much as I can. But I understood, I understood what he was saying. But in the heat of passion, you know, you're not really thinking straight. Well, Scott, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us uh, today. It's really uh, uh, been a pleasure seeing you and, uh, and knowing your story, uh, knowing how our team here in Ventura County has been able to help you. Transplant's goal was scored by number 65, Scott Klein. Assisted by 68, Jason Priestley.